In this video, we're going to apply strong induction to a complex recurrence relation. So we've seen some simple recurrence relations in previous videos in this module, but let's take a look at a more complicated one. This recurrence relation is considered complex because it has multiple base cases. And because it has multiple base it has multiple base cases because it looks back both one and two steps in the recurrence relation itself. If you work out the problems in this recurrence relation, well, we first obviously have zero and then four, that's from the base cases. And then the next one we have six times s of p minus one, which in this case, so for, for s of two, this would be six times four, or s of one, minus five times s of p minus two, which would be s of zero, which is zero. So this is gonna be 24. For s of three, we're gonna get that this is six times the previous, which is 24, minus five times, now we go two back, which in this case is now four, and what you're gonna end up with is 124. And if you keep doing this, the next one's gonna be 624 and so on. This is a very rapidly growing recurrence relation. I'd like to make a claim. I'd like to claim that a closed form solution, a closed form formula for this recurrence relation is five to the n minus one for all integers n greater than or equal to zero. So s of n equals five n minus one for all n greater than or equal to zero. And so in this video, we're gonna prove this using strong induction. So it's important to note that this is the recurrence relation. This is given to us. So this isn't questionable. This we know is, uh, this is given to us. And this is the thing that's sort of questionable. This is our claim. And we'd like to prove that the two are equivalent, but there's no question about this being correct because this is actually what we're given, right? The question is all about this. Is this the correct formula for our recurrence relation? So we're gonna do this using a uh, strong induction. And as I said before, we're gonna need two base cases. And we need two base cases because we have two initial steps or two base cases here in our recurrence relation. So we're first gonna look at the first one of these, and that is when n equals zero. Obviously when n equals zero, we have s of zero equals zero. Let's look at our closed form formula. In our closed form formula, five to the zero minus one, well five to the zero, anything to the zero is one. One minus one is zero. And since those two match, this base case works. Now let's take a look at the next base case. When n equals one. Right. And again, this is going to match our second base case in our recurrence relation. When n equals one, we're gonna plug this in to the formula that we're claiming matches our recurrence relation. We have five to the one minus one is five minus one is four, which does indeed match what we're given. So these two base cases do work out and we can be done with the base case portion of our proof by induction. Now, in this situation, multiple base cases were necessary because we were given multiple base cases in our problem, in our recurrence relation. So this is an example where it's very obvious that we need multiple base cases in our proof, right? Because we're given multiple base cases in our recurrence relation, we're gonna need multiple base cases in our proof. And often that's the way it's gonna work. And it's often going to be very obvious when you need more than one base case in your proof. Okay, for the inductive step, first we wanna look at our inductive hypothesis. What's our inductive hypothesis? Well, as always, 
we're going to suppose that what we're trying to prove is true, except now, we're, because it's not weak induction, we're not just supposing it works for some k, we want to suppose that it works for a range of values from 0 to k. So we're going to write this out this way. So we're going to suppose that s sub i equals 5 to the i minus 1 for all i in this range 0 to k. Right. So this range is going to include starting at our very uh, first value and going all the way up to k. Now you might ask, well, why do we say k is greater than or equal to 1 here? And that's because we, in the, in the definition of strong induction, we generally say that we, the range we use for inductive hypothesis is starting at the end of our base cases. So in this case, our last base case was 1, right, s of 1. So we're going to say for k greater than or equal to 1. And the reason we do this is because now when we talk about what we want to show, we want to show that it works for k plus 1. Well, if, if we said that we're assuming it works up until our uh, starting from our last base case, well, k plus 1 is going to be the first value that fits outside, I mean, assuming, assuming k is its minimal value, right? assuming k was 1, then k plus 1 is going to be 2, which is going to be the very first value that fits in this actual recurrence relation, right? So we're sort of saying we want to start at the minimum value. So we want to suppose, have our inductive hypothesis, suppose that this works for all values, and we want it to start in such a way that when we show this, we've already proved that it works for the base cases. So now we want to show that it works for everything else, which means starting at this recurrence relation moving forward whose minimal value would be 2. So it's a little complicated, but it works out. OK, so we want to show that s sub k plus 1 is equal to 5 to the power of k plus 1 minus 1. And so as with all of these proofs, we want to start with one side and move to the other. So I'm going to start with s of k plus 1. Now, what do I know of s of k plus 1? Well, again, I don't know about this claim. This is I'm just claiming this. We're trying to prove this equality. So we can't assume that equality. So I can't use that equality because we're trying to prove that equality. But what I can do is I can use what's given to me. And what's given to me is this recurrence relation. So I know the s of k plus 1, using that recurrence relation, is going to be 6 times s of k minus 5 times s of k minus 1. And again, it, the numbers are slightly different because here we have a plus 1. Well, here we just have p. And so if you, if you fix that up, this is going to be 1 less, and this is going to be 2 less than our starting values. Okay, and we can say this because we have our recur by its it's because of our recurrence relation. And again, our recurrence relation is known. It is given. Well, so what is s of k minus 1? Well, here's where we use our inductive hypothesis. We're supposing that this s of i equals 5 to the i minus 1 as long as i is between 0 and k. And here we have s of k and s of k minus 1. So both of those are within the appropriate ranges to fit into our inductive hypothesis. Okay, so we can substitute that in using that inductive hypothesis. And now it's a matter of algebra. So doing some simplification, we can distribute uh, that 6, and we can distribute this 5, and we're going to get this, this algebraic expression. And now what we can start doing is we can look, for example, at these two terms right here. And using the rules of exponents, 5 times 5 to some exponent is equal to 5 times this exponent plus 1. So this becomes these two 5s get sucked together, and it's 5 to the k. 
Okay, and now we can combine the negative six and the positive five and just make that minus one. Um, we have six five to, times five to the k minus one times five to the k, and we're gonna end up with five times five to the k. And that rule of exponents right here, we have five times five to the k. This is gonna be the same as five to the k plus one. And again, you can check your rules of exponents if you don't remember that. And this is exactly what we were trying to show. So we've completed our proof. And what this means is that the explicit formula that we are claiming is equivalent to the given recurrence relation is indeed, does indeed match our recurrence relation. And our proof is complete.